All right, welcome to the second annual Library Advisory Oh, can you hear me now? Welcome to the second annual Televised Library Board. Thank you, Eric. I'll recognize you from the dais. Uh, Maria, I'm going to have you call roll. Here. 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 Thank you, Maria. Um, approval of the minutes comes next. Can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Any discussion? Wow, we got it right the first time. That's good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppositions, absent, or, uh, abstentions, none. Next, the agenda. Any, any um, changes to the agenda? No. Okay. Public comment. Is there anybody, uh, I guess Eric Friedman's coming up for public comment. Eric, if you could state your name, you have two minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, for starting this, too. Appreciate it. Um, I'd like to start with a, just a brief discussion or talk from the chair's point of view. This is our second annual, and I really appreciate doing this as well. And I, I, I would like to call out Kathy Murillo, city council person here, too. Thank you for your support. We really appreciate that. Um, we're excited to share what's, what's going on at the library. A lot is happening and a lot will happen too. Um, we're looking forward to hearing from the staff and, um, and the budget issues and all that. And I thought I'd start with a quote like Eric did last year. It comes from President Barack Obama. And I think it's a good endorsement if we start at the top. At the moment that we persuade a child, any child, to cross that threshold, that magical threshold into a library, we change their lives forever, for the better. It's an enormous force for good. And I think given this, this year's effort with the Children's Library and our understanding and, and support of literacy for youth and children, that's a good quote for this year, and maybe next year it'll change. With that, I'd like to now turn to Director Irene Macias and staff for their presentation. And um, I'll turn the floor over to you. Good evening, Chair Klasso and members of the Library Board. I'm Irene Macias, Library Director, and I have with me, assisting in the presentation, uh, several staff members. Um, to my right is Gwen Wagey, Youth Services, and Senior Librarian for Youth Services, and then Jace Turner, Supervising Librarian. He oversees reference and um, technical services. And then also um, Maribel uh, Zambrano Esparza will be here um, to, to talk about the East Side Library. Okay. Um, here's the outline for tonight's presentation. We'll have a view, an overview of actually the entire library system. I didn't do that last year, but I think it's um, very informative to see uh, the entire library budget relative to the general fund budget, which is the two city libraries. Uh, so we'll present the proposed total and city budgets, and then our two capital projects. We'll review some key objectives for the coming year, and then um, each of the supervisors for these areas will give a presentation. 
um, the organization chart shows that we have uh, two managers that oversee the operation, uh, the central library manager, which uh, that position is currently vacant, but um, we have, we're in the process of completing a recruitment and hope to have one, someone on board soon. And then Margaret Esther is the library services manager that oversees um, our branches and also collection development for the entire system and oversees automation. As you know, we have quite a lot of library services that we offer to the public, uh, including all our collections. Um, we do serve all ages and all levels of uh, techno technological competence. Uh, we do have one-on-one -on -one te uh, technology assistance and a very vibrant adult literacy program. And we even have art galleries in the library. I wanted to start, uh, last year we provided you with quite a number of statistics, but this year we're going to tell you more about the programs, but I did want to include uh, this benchmark where you can see how our library compares to other public libraries, including Berkeley, Santa Cruz, Santa Monica, and Ventura County, relative to the number of programs that we present to the public. So, um, well, let me go back. So you can see that uh, we <laughs> presented about 2,200 programs in fiscal year 14. And uh, with a participation rate of close to 80,000. And that's significantly higher than all the other libraries. But um, when you look at our operating budgets, we are at the bottom. So kudos to our staff who put on many, many creative programs and do a wonderful job. Um, and it's pretty amazing that they do it with the limited resources that are available. This is the summary of the total department budget. And um, so you can see that the general fund, uh, which supports the two city libraries, Central and East Side, is 72% of the budget. And the uh, remaining four libraries um, share the $2 million of the county library fund. We are proposing a, a few changes in our fees. Um, First of all, we are, we've just added Blu-rays uh, to our DVD collection, so we've had to create um, a schedule for uh, the loss of the DVDs. So it's $40 for one or two discs and $50 for a set that has three or more discs. We'll also be adding some new spaces um, to the Central Library once Children's moves downstairs and we do a little re remodel on the main floor. Um, we will have a technology room and an adult literacy space. We don't, at this point, plan on scheduling those, but we wanted to have a fee schedule in case um, sometimes we have a huge demand and that would give us an option of possibly um, renting one of those rooms when um, there's the high demand. We also are looking at reducing the uh, fee for uh, late DVDs. When we first started this collection, um, it was a very small collection and very desirable, and the DVDs were also more expensive. So we only let them check out for a week, and we charged $1 per day for an overdue fee. This caused a, a lot of unhappiness with many of our users because they assumed they could have them for three weeks, and when they... Uh, returned them um, after three weeks, they would owe $14. So because we have such a large collection now and because we wanted to align all our fees, everything is 25 cents for a late fee, we are reducing the fee to 25 cents from a dollar. This also shows uh, the, the uh, total, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> revenues for the library department. Um, so you can see the fines and fees schedule, and it you can see it does go down somewhat dramatically, and that 
is because of the reduced DVD um, fees, but also the change that we made for this year where we eliminated the holds fee. Intergovernmental includes um, the monies that come from the county and all the cities that pay to support uh, the libraries in their jurisdictions, not including Santa Barbara, but uh, Carpinteria, Solvang. And the service charges um, include the uh, copies, book replacement fees, book sales, and the parcel tax uh, amount that goes to the Goleta Library. Our donations are also somewhat uh, projected to be down next year. Um, a lot of the donations for the Central Library have been going to the Foundation for the Children's Library, so that accounts for some of the reduction. And library gifts um, for next year, that 136000 is the amount, the distribution from the Peggy Maximus Trust that is a gift in perpetuity to the Central Library. And then there's some other miscellaneous revenues. Um, in terms of salaries and benefits, that, of course, is our biggest cost. And it is a scheduled, um, looks like next year is a little less. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It goes up. Can't see my numbers. It does go up. And that does reflect um, salary increases, uh, COLAs for um, staff. And um, the allocated costs are the costs that we pay out to the city uh, that provides a, a whole array of services from payroll to purchasing and our human resources, legal, all of those. Um, and our book uh, acquisitions budget is somewhat stable. We were hoping to have a, a little more there, but... Um, in the end, um, that was all we could eke out once we accounted for all our other expenses. So that comes to a total of $7.2 million. And uh, so that was for the entire system. And now I'm going to do uh, the overview for the two city libraries, Central and East Side. Um, again, the fines and fees go down because of the reasons I explained earlier. Um, the intergovernmental uh, goes down about $50,000. That actually reflects uh, a scheduled um, change in the county per capita, whereas they, they had intended a status quo budget dollar-wise because of the population increase. It actually um, comes out to a $0.07 cents per capita reduction. Also, um, that doesn't account for the entire $50,000 reduction. There's also um, uh, some grants that we we had received state grants um, this year. And, of course, we can't project whether or not they'll come in next year. Uh, library gifts, you'll see, is the 136. So our, our revenues um, were expecting almost $1.3 million, but then the bulk of our budget for the two libraries comes from the city, and next year it will be $3,890,000, which is, um, very, is substantial support from the city. And then um, we broke these out by a major object, and you can see that salaries and benefits account for 68% of our budget, um, and the allocated costs are about 15% of the budget. Our book acquisitions budget is only 8%. Ideally, it would be somewhere between 10 and 15%. Um, we're still hoping someday to get there. And we have 28, almost 29 FTEs, and we do um, have quite a number of hourly staff in the library. So our total budget is 5160000 and the appropriations, again, salary is $3.5 million. Um, the special projects is purchase of some computers and some software um, and supplies and services includes um, the, uh, the administrative fee that we uh, get for operating the county libraries and some other things like uh, book replacement fees and copies. 
And then moving on to our capital improvement projects, uh, the, big, the big project that we've been talking about for several years and is actually coming uh, to fruition shortly is the Children's Library. You can see um, that it's under construction. That photo is actually a few weeks old. We now have drywall so we can see the shapes of the space um, and we do expect it to be done in summer, uh, this summer. We continue to work on the Library Plaza project. We're almost through with the uh, final design, but as you know, uh, there is no construction funding identified for the project, um, so that will be something to look for um, in the future. I wanted to review some key objectives for next year. Um, we with some grant funding, we're going to be evaluating our homework help and our summer reading programs, and we'll, with the help of some UCSB research, uh, a research team, and we will utilize those results to determine what the best practices will be and um, to help us and decide on our future programming. We're also um, going to be promoting uh, what we call the marketplace area at the Central Library. This will be the main floor. We have ordered new shelving that will be more of a bookstore feel where people can browse. We'll be rotating different segments of our collection through there to market it and for people to know um, what we have. The uh, shelves upstairs are not as uh, user friendly as we would want. So we're really excited about this. It'll really feature um, some of the wonderful books that we have in our collection that maybe haven't been noticed for a while. With um, all the new spaces, we are going to look at some better wayfinding. We do get the com many comments from our public um, that it's difficult to find things. So once we're settled in the new space and know where everything's going to be, because currently it changes by the week, um, we will be uh, trying to get some new signage. And one thing that we uh, really like to share is that we have quite a lot of public computers. They get really hard use, but we have a really great technician that keeps them in service. And actually, our goal is 95%, but it usually comes out at 98%. He's really a whiz at keeping everything running um, so that the public really appreciates that. We also um, look to have attendance of 38,000 um, at our programs for, uh, at the city library, so that's central and east side, 38,000. Uh, we're also going to help 250 adult learners, adult literacy learners, uh, to reach um, uh, their goals with the, uh, relating to the California Library Literacy Goal. And, that really is a flexible goal where the learners actually set their own goal as to what they want to accomplish and measure themselves against that. And um, we're really grateful that the city administrator is recommending um, the restoration of the children's library in position. We're definitely going to need it moving into the new space. And um, given the many grants that we've been successful in procuring um, and the programming that comes along with it. OK, and so um, we didn't really wait for the that program uh, for the uh, position to be restored and we just went ahead and wrote all these grants so we have been scrambling um, with the many many new programs that we have so Gwen Wagey is going to tell you about those. Chair Glasso and members of the board thank you for being here to listen and find out about what we're doing. Um, like Arvine said we have just been going gangbusters in the children's uh, department and actually throughout the um, system. People are doing amazing programs with kids. Um, trying to think about this year, it's been a year of growth. It's been a year of new collaboration. It's been a year of learning. And then also seeing our community's children grow. And I think that's why I love being in the public library. You see children come in to our libraries and from the first time they come to very soon, they're very comfortable and very proud of themselves for being able to choose books, find a comfortable place to read, and and 
learn whatever they want to learn. Um, do I have the... Ah, great. And of course, we are absolutely excited about the new children's space. I think we've heard so much about there's more space, it's going to be brighter, it's going to be cozy. Um, we'll have a great space where we can have story times as well as in the afternoon it will be a multi-purpose space where we'll bring out tables for homework help. And actually something that's not on the slide but I'm really excited about is that our staff will be much closer to the area so we'll be able to back up in a busy time. Um, libraries traditionally serve children. We Story time is something that we have you know, senior citizens come in and talk about how they brought their children or their to the library and grew up in the library. But we've expanded that to include babies, toddlers, wiggly children of all ages, um, art programs, family events. Uh, we also are really excited about our outreach. We're out in the schools. We're out in the community. Um, our storytellers go to local preschoolers and to the school libraries. This year we were actually add, able to add um, book giveaways at kindergarten and first grade student classrooms. So now we kind of have a an ongoing pattern from preschool all the way up to third grade where there's a library staffer including um, being included in their classrooms. And one of the biggest projects we're excited about is the Family Literacy Center. Our homework help um, program has grown this year. Actually, the next slide is an amazing statistic that I wanted to show you. Um, but the children's area, where you see these people sitting, um, actually, about a year and a half ago, we had to take out shelving to make space for this. And it is full every day. There's standing room only. So if you come any day, Monday through Thursday, 3 to 7, it's full and exciting. We have great volunteers. We also have a wonderful program where children read with dogs that helps um, boost their confidence. Um, we, in January, actually, thanks to the UCSB students that are also helping us do research, we had a huge increased number of volunteers. And um, this year, we also stepped forth and started using adult volunteers in the library, thanks to Partners in, the ed in Education, which is through the County Office of Education. Uh, we were also able to add software that helps people with phonics and reading comprehension. And this is the statistic I wanted to show you. This is quarterly since last January. And we started the homework help sessions are 20 minute turns. So some children will have two or three turns in a day. But last January, um, we were just helping a couple kids read. And then you can see the jump from, from October to January and March of this year is huge. Um, it's been really fun to see all these students coming in and have parents approach us about how great their parent-teacher evaluations have been and how their grades have improved. Um, there was a mother just the other day that said her child had a really hard time with homework and now she's comfortable and happy and she was just every staff person she could tell she was thanking. Um, and then it correlates um, with new adult literacy learners. Not That jump isn't all parents, but most of it is parents who have been introduced to us through the homework help sessions in the afternoon. So that was really exciting. The other thing we've been working on is the Read Together project. And it actually, it's part of everything that we do in the library already. We already talked about outreach. We'll talk about summer reading. We're talking about learning together. But it, it includes curriculum to encourage kids to read with other people and out loud. And um, one really great program of that is Reading Ambassadors, where we go to the schools, and then they come and have a graduation at one of our library sites. Um, we've been collaborating with the community. We have just been able to really connect with a lot of community agencies in the school district. And we also, teens, we don't get to do a lot with teens, but what we're trying to do is things that are meaningful to them um, in moving forward in their life. We, during the summer, tons of teens volunteer and help us out. Um, that means they're involved in the library and excited with other kids. We're doing essay writing. We're actually hosting events with other community organizations that really support those teens. And finally, we're getting ready for summer reading. It's our biggest program of the year. Um, the best thing is that kids still come into the library and talk about what they've been reading and just get really excited about that. And we're, last year, we had about 6,000 students system-wide. And it's all about superheroes. And our community members are those superheroes, too. 
Thank you. Good evening, Library Board. Thank you so much for having us here and for hearing us out. Um, my name is Jace, and I want to talk a little bit about the reference and digital services that the Santa Barbara Public Library System um, provides. Um, this year's highlights, we've added a couple of new services, um, PBS streaming video collection. That's really exciting for us. That's about 400 um, streaming um, PBS videos that are always available for library patrons to, to stream. And it includes many of the popular um, um, series like the Ken Burns Jazz, um, Nova, uh, the American Experience documentaries. It's a great way to enrich and round out the, the, the library's digital and streaming collection. We also added Pronunciator Language Learning Program. We often get requests from library patrons for language learning programs. And this year, we were able to find a really great product at a really wonderful price that offers um, ADE languages, including um, 50 ESL languages. And this program is fantastic. It enables you to download an app onto your mobile device. Um, it has pronunciating um, the quizzes, flashcards. It's um, pretty comprehensive and very mobile. Our Edson Smith Historic Photos Digitization Project continues. We did about 200 more photos this year, with probably 200 more coming next year. Long term, we're looking at hoping um, to submit our digitized photos to the Digital Public Library of America, DPLA, which is a clearinghouse for um, archived and digital content which would be fantastic for us because then people searching for historic photos of Santa Barbara would be able to find them by just searching Google. So that would really increase access and visibility to the collection. While we continue to add digitized content and downloadable materials and that sort of thing, we also want to make sure to support it with um, assistance for our library users. So as Irene mentioned earlier, computer coaching continues. Um, that's one-on-one -on -one computer coaching that's offered seven days a week, four hours a day. Um, so far to date, we've had over 600 appointments and over 500 hours of one-on-one -on -one tutoring. We also offer drop-in assistance for mobile devices. Jace, uh, yes. we've had a whole lot more than that. Um, is that just for this year? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, for this year, yeah. Okay. So to date, so from July uh, 1st, 2014 to, uh, I would say, the end of March. Yeah. Um, we also offer drop-in assistance for mobile devices. And so the drop-in assistance is not just to help library patrons use the downloadable content that we provide, but also just how to use their device. Oftentimes, we have patrons that walk up and say, I just got this brand new iPad or this brand new Galaxy. How do I use it? So we offer that drop-in assistance uh, five days a week. That's two hours a day. We also offered a host of technology classes this year, both in English and Spanish, at the various libraries, the Central Library, Eastside Library, and the Carpinteria Library. And those classes range from basic computer um, use, how to create an email ad account, that kind of thing, to selling on Craigslist, internet, internet security and safety. Um, and, and again, those are classes that the public have asked for. And so we've responded by creating curriculum to, to, to support their needs. Um, also, we've had many requests over the years for new multifunction photocopiers. It may sound a little bit strange, but, but these new photocopiers that are now at the Central Library offer color copies. Um, patrons can scan to email or, or flash drive. So if you want to scan something from a book directly to your email, that's possible. It also enables um, Wi-Fi printing. So you can print wirelessly from your mobile device. That's actually coming soon. And um, it also enables patrons to pay using their credit card or debit card, which is another request that they had asked for. I wanted to talk a little bit about the adult programs and, and, and our community engagement. Um, up, up, up on the screen, you'll just see a, a, a handful of, of, of adult programs that we offered this year where we've partnered with various community groups and organizations. Um, the Theater Book Club is a really popular series that we have. We, I think that's, this is our eighth or se seventh or eighth year now that we've offered the Theater Book Club. 
um, Santa Barbara Reads program that we just had that just finished was amazingly um, attended and really well received. The grant writing workshop we had just last week and the nurturing parents workshop was a, a three workshop series that was hosted by the library and um, taught by the, I think it was the family agency. Um, also something that feeling the need from our community, we've, we've partnered with organizations to develop these programs. And finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about the single service desk that we've implemented on the main floor um, of the library at, at the central library. In 2008, when the budget became pretty tight, we weren't able to replace staff as they retired. We had to close the lower level, which was the periodicals um, area with the periodicals desk, as well as the information desk on the main level. And that was tough for our staff and for our patrons because the only service desk was the children's desk on the main floor and then also the upper level reference desk. So staff spent a lot of time, they, they put in a lot of work trying to streamline their work processes, getting rid of things that were task oriented and focusing more on service oriented work. We put a lot of effort into using or developing our, our self-check model and, our, and ordering items that come to us shelf ready. In essence, trying to eliminate some of the more remedial tasks for making um, the time that they spend at work more meaningful to the patrons and, and to their own work day. So we developed a, um, a series of classes and training modules for each of the staff to attend to prepare for the opening of this new desk. We have staff working this new service desk from multiple areas of the library, which has been really wonderful for them. They, like, for example, the, the, the staff and tech services who are spend their day ordering the books and processing the books are now helping patrons out on the floor, helping them search the online catalog. So they get to see how their work behind the scenes impacts their, their, their work and the patron experience inside the building. The main level service desk also offers some basic technology assistance, checkout assistance, library cards, and library programs information. So we're really excited to offer that back to the main level. And um, so far, it's working out really well. I think that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, Chair Glasso and members of the board. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak in front of you today. Um, I'm Maribel Zambrano Sparza. I supervise the Eastside Library, and there it is. <laughs> um, at the Eastside Library, we have 12 internet computers in our main reading room, two word computers, which uh, many children use for uh, homework and a lot of people use for resumes. And in our library, that's something that is very important. Many children do not have printers at home or may not have access to computers to type their homework. Um, in our children's area, we have six internet computers and two uh, or learning stations. Um, we have uh, Wi-Fi and printing services, and we have the Martin Luther King meeting room, uh, which currently rents to approximately 30 organizations a month. Okay. Um, this is our circulation statistics, however, I think you may have already heard about these. We uh, circulated over 40,000 items total checkout. That's only July to January of 2015. And 20,000 of those items circulated were children's materials. Um, 7,000 plus items circulate on average monthly. Sometimes those numbers are higher, um, rarely lower. Um, so let's see, some of the programs that we offer, I just love these photographs, some of the programs that we offer are tours, and we have library visits such as Girls Inc., Casa de la Raza, um, especially in the summer. Uh, we are the primary library for the Adelante uh, dual language charter school, and we offer uh, programs, whether it be dancing or jugglers or music or stories or magicians, um, and uh, all the way up to a Spanish book club for parents. <clears throat> so, let me see. Oh, thank you. Some of the... Um, 
Let's see, this is our summer reading program. We had 813 summer reading signups last year. And I would like to add to some of that, some information through um, our story times. We had up from July of last year to current, we had over 4,044 children attend our story times. 827 adults came along with them. We had uh, for our programs, which would be the magicians and storytellers and jugglers, all that fun stuff, we had over 2,000. Um, 300 children attend, and 469 adults. Um, uh, for our crafts, which we have year-round, we had over uh, approximately 400 children attend, and uh, close to 240 adults. And one of the things that we're very proud of that we did with our summer reading program this past year was that we had a record 43 teens sign up and finish the summer reading program. So for us uh, and for anyone who works with teens, that is very impressive. <laughs> um, thank you. We like to partner with quite a few organizations in our community that benefits um, both organizations. We work with the Santa Barbara Museum of Art quite a bit. We have a homework center with the Santa Barbara Museum of Art on Tuesdays and Thursdays of every week. They, the children um, get homework assistance from three credentialed teachers and then have an art project which runs for six weeks. Um, they, the, the sessions run for six weeks. They have a total of 20 children and we're in the process of hoping to be able to recruit some more teachers from the Museum of Art to be able to run more days for that program at the library. Uh, with the Santa Barbara Museum of Art, we're also able to have such programs as um, Art and Stories, where we read a story and then the children create artwork. And we also have Art and Poetry. Um, in May, we will be having Art um, the history of Asian prints because it is Asian and Pacific Islander American month. Um, some of the things that I'd like to point out that we do have at the Eastside Library, something that we've had this past year, um, we had, um, Excuse me. We partnered with the Mariposa Project, which is an early intervention physical speech language pathology therapy service for children. Um, they've come in a couple of times and we work with children. They try to identify children who are having issues with either speech, learning, cognitive um, issues. And that has been a wonderful program. We hope to partner and have them more frequently. Um, we've had some wonderful events like uh, Smokey the Bear, uh, our reading buddies, and you can see some of the uh, participants there from United Way this past summer, some young boys reading over there, and something that we've just started re doing, which has been a fabulous hit, is um, karaoke. And <laughs> we had karaoke on Earth Day this past uh, week on the 22nd, and once again, it was a big hit. And it, the children are learning to read. They're learning um, confidence, and they're singing and standing up in front of people. And this one picture, if you can see on the lower left, is of a young man who um, is on the autism specter. And his mother was amazed at listening to him sing. She actually came in from another room and was standing in tears just observing him because he has come such a long way. It was an amazing, amazing moment at the library. Um, and I think that's that happens every day at the library. We call them little miracles, little wonderful opportunities where you see someone change someone's face when they uh, realize that they are reading. Um, and that includes parents and children. Um, so... Those are some of the things that are happening at the Eastside Library. One thing that is coming up that I do want to mention is we have some wonderful photo essays, which are photographs that travel from the black gold system that we borrow. We've had Hispanics on the Central Coast. We've had African Americans on the Central Coast. And in May, we will be having a photo essay display of Asian Pacific Americans on the Central Coast, which I think is very important to show some of our, our patrons the different cultural aspects of the Santa Barbara County area. 
Thank you very much. Well, thank you all. I had no, you know, I'm in this ancillary business and I have no idea some of those statistics that you uh, have collected. Thank you. Is it appropriate for questions from us to the yes. staff? I, I was about to say that that concluded the presentation and we're happy to answer any questions. Great. I have a question about the, the big spike in the homework and um, I think there was also adult literacy. W what do you attribute that to? Was it additional communication or what, what made it s jump so much? I think actually um, what we learn when we're doing programs in the library is a lot of the time it's about word of mouth. Um, so what we see is that it's growing, but also um, the big spike, we did start doing radio ads in January oh. and we finished all of our distribution to the schools. So I think that was a really great connection. And then part of the grant was to to include an adult literacy staffer out in the area while the children were getting their homework help. So I think, again, it's it takes time for people to realize, oh, that's a library person, and oh, that person, I might ask them, you know, while I'm sitting here, I might ask for some additional help. And um, I think it's just also just bringing the students every day after homework, starting to get to know the library better. Yeah, I'm just at, I'm really impressed at all of the the careful thought and planning that appears to have gone into these programs that ends up with these results where you're making so much out of really not as big a budget as some of the really you know comparable and bigger city libraries. I we just, appreciate it. Yeah, I, <laughs> we do. Yeah, <laughs> Mayor Glasso and Board Member Roberts. Um, um, I think Gwen may have mentioned this, but I just wanted to reinforce that when we started the homework help, the staff realized that the parents were coming with the kids and sitting there um, with not a lot to do while their care, their students were being uh, tutored. So we crafted a, a grant and submitted it to make it a family learning center so that the we could engage the parents and that having that staff person there every afternoon engaging those parents and letting them know about our adult literacy program is what has really caused that spike. Well, that, that's interesting. That's kind of like Disney movies where they make content fun for adults so the adults get invested, the adults are motivated to go you know, over and above wanting their kids to get their homework done, which is, again, it, it just shows the thought and planning, which I, I think is, is really exceptional. And we have another example of that over at the East Side Library where um, the mobile Waterford um, van would come um, to work with kids and the parents would bring them. And Marivelle realized that the moms needed something to do, so she started a book club for the moms. Great. I'm mindful of the time, but do you have questions? I have several, so. Go for it. Um, my first question is, and you notice this, that um, salaries, pensions, so on and so forth, outweigh all the other concerns. My question to you is, I think you, if you could help me, if you could supplement actually the number of hours that volunteers take up the burden that are not taken up by staff and how that would, in fact, outweigh my concerns about salaries versus book acquisitions. Chair Glasso, um, Board M Member Naylor, um, thank you for asking that because we would not be able to uh, present the number of programs that we do without the use of volunteers. We have a tremendous number of volunteers and this year our goal was to um, have 12,000 volunteer hours at the Central and East Side Libraries and um, I learned from Jace that we're um, expected to exceed that. And they do quite a lot of things from being the computer coaches to helping pull those books that are being requested. If you place a book on hold, um, we call them book detectives and they go and pull the book off the shelf and send it on its way to you. Um, we have the adult literacy uh, tutors, of course. Um, what are some of the other volunteer tasks? Well, in, in youth services, um, the, with the homework help and also during the summer, the teens, they sit and listen to the younger kids um, do book oral book reports. 
Don't forget the dogs. Oh, right. <laughs> the dogs are volunteers, too. <laughs> Yeah. Can I ask a related? Oh, that's right. Can I ask a related question before? Mm -hmm. um, have you, given that you've shown that the productivity of the staff is is pretty significant when compared to some other large city libraries? Do we have any idea of um, salaries and and benefits for those other Berkeley, Santa Monica? If you guys are in range, or I'm going to take hazard a guess, it probably is lower than, than it, those other cities. It's uh, the, the city regularly. Um, or not regularly, but um, from time to time does salary surveys. Mm -hmm. And I think we fall um, a little bit below the median, but it's quite a bit more expensive to live here than some of the other cities. So in essence, um, it's not as good. I, I assume other people want to ask. Well, I'll wait for other questions and then chime in again if I can. Thank you. Um, do we have data about the effect of these wonderful children's programs on the academic performance of the uh, children? In other words, information from the schools about the impact that you're having? Um, to our <laughs> yes, we do. We're actually That's actually why we have written the grants to do more evaluation. What we see is we have all this anecdotal evidence. We have parents showing us their report cards. We have children that come to the library excited to, to do their homework when they weren't before. But that is why we are following through on grant research, where we, um, we're taking more surveys. We're learning how to take a survey that actually has meaningful data. We're, um, the UCSB students are actually, some of them have been, were so touched by what they were doing that they're actually going to do a videography study where they talk about their experience. So we're, we're gathering that data. The trick with the school district is that we, um, we, as a public library, we really protect confidentiality. So we actually can't look at test scores and then it, you know, collaborate it. But we did do a project at Peabody School where um, we did some of our read-aloud workshops, and the teachers that participated actually did see an academic improvement. So, it's, so we're learning how to tell that story better. Thank you. I, you know, since I'm heavily involved in that children's library, I noticed it didn't come up as a rental space. The performance area, is that not going to be rentable? Oh, okay. <laughs> I could see uh, Margaret Chair So um, we actually uh, had a, a debate about it, and it just seemed to us that it is uh, going to be so heavily used by our own programming um, that we didn't want to um, use it as a rental space. That may change in the future, but for next fiscal year, it's going to be just for kids. <laughs> An ancillary to that, and then I'll defer to Suzette, okay. <laughs> Board Member Naylor. Um, the marketplace, it, it's termed that way. Will books be for sale? No. Um, you're the second person that asked me, so I think we need a better, It's a that's a kind of library jargon. It re just refers to displaying them in a way that's more attractive, uh, that emulates the bookstore model where you have fewer books on the shelf, they face out. You have collections that, on a topic um, that we won't be selling our collection. But we always have an ongoing book sale in the library. And purchases at that book sale uh, do um, go back into our budget for us uh, to purchase new books. Thank you. Um, I had a question and slight comment, which is when you chose those libraries, Berkeley, Santa Monica, et cetera, et cetera, what criteria did you actually use to determine that they were comparable to your library? Um, so some of them are, are cities that the city compares itself to. We chose Ventura because it's our neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, Santa Monica is um, another beach city, although they do have, just in general, much higher um, revenues than our city does. Um, so. I, I wondered simply because I think my comment and my point would be that 
I really truly believe that libraries are specific to the communities that they serve and that in fact I don't think you need to compare yourself to cities you'll never find a comparable one quite the same and what you're doing whether you're higher or lower in terms of programs it's the type of programs it's the type of kids you're serving and adults and that's really what's important and I would actually encourage you not to bother to compare yourself because I don't think it's actually necessary um, I'm going to differ with that opinion. Uh, I mean, we're all entitled to our opinions, but um, I, I mean, basically what it shows is that you guys are making a, a lot out of a, a small budget. And, and, I mean, dollars are dollars, no matter what the city is. And numbers of programs are numbers of programs, no matter whether the, you know, there, there are different programs in different cities. I think it's important. In fact, I wanted to, like, tell everybody in my office this afternoon <laughs> what, what we were accomplishing. Um, but, um, you know, it, it does, it does help. I think, I think the reason it's important is it helps taxpayers in this city see how far their tax dollars are going. They, they know that, um, Santa Monica, there's bigger tax base, a lot more people, and that it is apples and oranges to a, to a degree. And, and to that extent, I, 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 to, I, I, I'm in agreement with you, but I do think it helps taxpayers see that their tax their tax dollars are accomplishing a lot in the, in this um, in this community. The other thing that's important is that although um, salaries and benefits um, are offsetting a book budget, there's no point in having a lot of expensive books on the shelves if kids aren't learning to read early, if kids aren't learning to love books and libraries early, and that and that takes staff, that that takes time, that takes the thoughtfulness that's going into these programs. That's actually you know, getting traction with the community and, and turning kids into readers. So I, I think that it's, it's, it never looks good to compare the, the, the benefits and the salaries against the books, but it, it is truly apples and oranges, and, 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 and there's no point in having a really great book budget if there aren't new readers coming, coming in with every generation. So that, I just wanted to, to share my thoughts on, on those topics. Um, so. Thank you. Um, I'm going to, we have 10 minutes left of our time here, and that includes a budget review. Uh, okay. It doesn't? Okay, no budget review. So um, we talked about a motion to put it on the record for the restoration of the youth services librarian position. I, I'd be happy to make a motion, but I think we have 10 minutes left. I do have another question. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just be mindful that we have 10 minutes. Yes. Uh, well, I think it'll be a quick vote, but um, I guess it's sort of a question and throwing it out there. One of the things you've come up against, and many of the buildings in Santa Barbara have come up against, are the aging infrastructure. I know Kathy Maria is very familiar with this problem, and we're all facing it. It's a very historic city, and we love our history here. So one of the things that's come up as I was listening to you was how much of your services are not in the library. This is, to me, a very interesting point, and I think one that we as a board and that you as staff might consider, which is to break out of concerns about, yes, you have to deal with this building, the library building, and all the things we have to do, and the ADA and all that sort of business, but sometimes maybe put more effort into and, and this is what I'm asking you, are there ways that you can let loose of the constraints and the binds of the building? And some things like that, Mr. Chair Glass and I were talking about, are maybe storage goes somewhere else and the building becomes more useful for people, places, and so on and so forth. There are ways to think about what the building ought to be and how it can support your efforts, not necessarily in the building. So I guess that's my question to you. Have you been thinking about this? We have um, had many conversations about this. Um, certainly, uh, the building has many constraints, but um, just the most obvious is the fact of the physical book. Libraries used to be storage places for books, and now, um, as we have more and more um, electronic materials, um, we, are, we aren't talking about adding shelving anywhere. We're talking about creating more. And you can see in children's, we took down the shelves right. to put tables in so that the kids could come to the homework center. So 
the physical space is being becoming more a community gathering space, but we also do go out in the community a lot. Even during the recession, we maintained our outreach staff and continued our outreach efforts. And uh, the youth services st staff especially um, go out to lots of preschools. Um, what are some of the other places? Gwen? To? Uh, library board. We also go out to parks with Park and Rec. Parks and Rec. We go to the elementary schools and the high schools, um, and actually some community centers as well. Right. Your services are much more than the books and media that we have here, and I, I would really encourage you to think about that. And actually, I think an exciting one is the Mobile Waterford is now um, permanent at the Parma Center. Uh, the old Parma. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a storyteller that I believe goes there once in a week from east side. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm, I'm ready to make a motion. <laughs> I didn't mean to rush you. Not at all. <laughs> Good question. Um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, recommend that we um, have the city council approve this budget and particularly approve the restoration of the children's library in position now that we're about to have a children's library. Second. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppositions? <laughs> All right, good. Thank you. It's a great presentation. This city has a lot to be proud of with you all doing very important and, and big work. Um, I have here the budget review and recommendations on the agenda. On the agenda, but maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. That was the presentation. That, that was, that was a presentation. Well, okay. Right. Board and staff communications. Anything staff. else you'd like to add to this wonderful presentation? All right. Floor recognizes Milt. I, we were told uh, that uh, the Wi-Fi in the library will be upgraded at some point in the near future. Can you tell us approximately when that might be? Uh, Chair Glasso and Board Member Milt Hess, um, that Wi-Fi upgrade happened this fiscal year, so that would have been effective July 1st oh. of 2014. So that was from our last year's budget. Okay. And we have seen an increase. It's th At any given time, there can be over 100 people using our Wi-Fi in the building, um, which is quite impressive. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a good start to providing better access, but um, we could probably still make some more improvements there. Okay, no, thank you. I didn't realize that it had gone into effect. I've noticed that we have not had some of the problems that we had had in the past, so I guess I should have taken that as a clue. Thank you. Uh, we actually doubled um, the speed, and then um, we doubled it again because it, was, it still wasn't um, sufficient. So we made quite a... Quite a big improvement, um, but I think as more people find out about the speed, then more people come and, right. and it starts to bog down again. But we'll always be monitoring that and make any adjustments as possible. Um, actually, um, there is an opportunity statewide um, that the state library is uh, championing, and it, and it looks like there, there will be funding next year for... Um, libraries to connect uh, through fiber optic lines to um, uh, something called scenic and that is the it's the it's the fiber optic backbone that supports schools and colleges and there will be an opportunity for libraries to connect to scenic so um, we are looking at that through the black gold consortium to look at upgrading all the libraries and black gold. So that might be a future enhancement for us. Thank you. Any future agenda items that we need to consider now for our May meeting? 
I would like to put on the agenda a discussion of the authority that City Council has uh, given you to um, exercise more control over the, the library grounds uh, to understand what the plans are as a result. We'll put that on the agenda for next month. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, board. Thank you, management and staff of the library. And um, our next meeting is Tuesday, May 26th at the Faulkner, regular time, 12 noon. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>